I'm literally to happen. just, it, ju it was just crazy. Occasion, I'd be there for that pre-season, and then I don't think I've been at a club for more than two seasons. Is it hard when you, like you say, you get settled, you're getting used to your teammates, you're, you're getting that trust? It took you three months. Well, to let's speak well, to let, get well, dunk. Let, well, let's just throw the club out the window. Let's just throw um, your travelling out the window. You meet friends, mm -hmm. you meet good friends, um, you meet acquaintances, you settle, and then so again, forget the club, forget you know, your career, you've met friends, you've moved to a different place. So be it London, Manchester, Blackburn, Newcastle, etc. And then you have to move again. It's frustrating. It can make you angry. It can make you question yourself. It can make you doubt yourself. Where do you go from there? You literally sometimes have to just suppress them feelings and just go forward, move forward. And the only way to move forward is go and is to say, I'm going to make some more money. I'm going to play for another a team. Mm. Hopefully, I can progress and stay at this club. It's frustrating. Having had that England under 21 experience and craved the the big nights, the the chance to shine, was you ever tempted to switch allegiance to Jamaica with your parents having Jamaican heritage? Mm -hmm. And we've seen some great players switch allegiance to Jamaica yeah. over the years. I think at that point, it was the reggae boys. So at that point, it was the World Cup. So I was playing under 21s when the reggae boys got into the World Cup. Um, so that was with like Frank Sinclair. So Frank Sinclair, yeah. Marcus Gell. Jamie Lawrence. Jamie Lawrence. Yeah. Um, so I got asked to go to the World Cup. At that point, as we've spoke about, um, I was at Crystal Palace doing very well. I got called up to the 21. So I'm, I mean, my dad's from Jamaica. My mum's from Jamaica. My family's from Jamaica. I originate from Jamaica. But I'm born in England. Um, I'm trying to strive, and don't get me wrong, and I don't think Jamaicans will um, be disrespected by this, but at this point, they weren't at a point where I felt my career was going. I was still young. I was still trying to prove myself. I didn't know whether that transition going to Jamaica would humble me, or sorry, um, enable me. I didn't know. So I chose under 21s. Um, but at that time, if I look back, hindsight, you had the likes of Michael Owen, Robbie Fowler, Alan Shearer, uh, Ian Wright. I could go on. Les Ferdinand. Les Ferdinand. Teddy uh, Sheringham. <laughs> Andy Cole. Andy Cole. Andy Cole. Yeah, Jesus. To, uh, to get past these players at my young age. Um, but I wasn't going to throw that away because I believed in myself and I wanted to um, do the best I could. Because you played for the under-21s, so does that mean you was ineligible to switch to Jamaica? Come, at, at, that point, at, at, at that point in my career and, and that time in football yes you couldn't I think nowadays if you play for uh, your country or whatever or, or, or your state of country I think you can then move on to yeah I think as long as it's not a competitive game yes you can yeah so 21s would have been then I could have played for Jamaica yes interesting so after the the Wigan loan finished and you realised that Steve Bruce hadn't offered you the contact the contract that you expected him to yeah what was the next move for you um well, again, and first and foremost, um, I'm still contracted to Charlton, so I've got to go home. So would you go then back to Charlton, back to the club and see what their plans were? Well, uh, well, it's pre-season, so, or it's your off-season, so you just go home. You have your holidays, you, you do what you're doing. Um, and then, through, like I said to you, when I would call my agent, <laughs> what's going on? Where am I going? Et cetera. It was uh, my, my breaks, my holidays weren't breaks. It was me constantly must have been a stressful way to live. And I'm not saying, oh, look, look at you, feel sorry for you. This yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I don't want you to that. say that because I, I don't like, that. yeah, I don't want you to put it just, across like that. And, and I, just think, just, I try not to say that. Yeah, yeah I try not, not to say that. Like that. I'm just mm. thinking like, you know, you're, you're constantly living in fear of moving. You're constantly getting ready to. There's the word, living in fear, living in fear. Where am I going to go? Where am I taking my family? Where's, you know, et cetera. Interesting. Um, so, finish Wigan, go on holiday, um, 
fully knowing that I'm going to move somewhere else. Um, but if I don't, I've still got a contract at Charlton. Um, so then um, uh, Cardiff come in. Um, and Birmingham come in. Sorry, Cardiff come in first. Offered me a good contract. At the time, I was with a, 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 a girl who lived in Manchester. And we were um, trying to set up life there, thinking I was still going to be at Wigan. So I think I chose... Um, I was I was going to Cardiff. I was going. Um, I was scared to go to Cardiff because it would I would have had to live up there. She had her career in Manchester. Then Birmingham came in at the last minute. I jumped at the chance. That was Alec um, McLeish. Yeah, Alex McLeish. McLeish. Yeah. Um, big money for you as well. Two million pounds. Yeah. At the time. Big yeah. signing for Birmingham. Yeah. He did say to me when I went in there um, that I'm not going to be um, first choice which he only told me when we were sitting around the table, which I wasn't... Um, You'd already signed? No, no, he he was telling me that as we we were talking. Um, but um, again, honest, again, I can quite fight... Quite honest of him, though, isn't that, it? Again, quite honest of him. And um, I can fight for my place. I'm not scared of that. I'm not scared of um, coming up against players. Um, we had Kevin Phillips there, uh, McFadden there. Um, How and good of a natural finisher was Kevin Phillips? Oh, I'd Kev like to just focus on Kevin for a minute. Ke Kevin literally... <sighs> Great outside the box, but knew where to be inside the box to score a goal. Great penalty taker. Um, don't get me wrong, he's not going to hold the ball up. and He's not going to flick a ball on it. He's not going to get out wide and put a cross in. He's a goal scorer. What was he like as a, as a person? Oh, amazing. Amazing. Um, mature. Um, experienced. Um, he wouldn't speak down to you at any point, obviously. But not obviously, but at that point, I was um, a mature player myself. Had been at Everton. Had... Um, and done some good things myself. So it was about working alongside each other. So it was just about team banter, team morale, um, putting confidence within each other, yeah. Interesting time for Birmingham as well. Such a such a strong squad, finishing second and gaining promotion yep. to the Premier League. Again, is it is it sort of a bittersweet that you haven't haven't had the chance to reap your rewards and represent Birmingham in the Premier League? <sighs> To be honest, throughout the 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 trend, the the the, the season that we got to the uh, Premiership, I'm still on this Charlton um, transition. I'm my head's not in the game. I'm losing faith within myself, confidence. I was injured majority of the season. My hamstrings, my back. You know, I used to have to wave the coach goodbye and say good luck to the players. And if I was part of the squad, I was sub, I'd have come on. And really and truly, I'm quite hard on myself. Um, and I would say I probably didn't do too well. Um, I remember us going up against uh, Reading and my daughter being in the crowd and um, I was sub. Uh, Kevin Phillips scored the winner. We, we just won 2-1, two, uh, two, I think it was. Uh, I was begging to get on, literally, biting at the chomp just to get on. I wanted to get on and help the team. Um, didn't actually happen, but um, at the end of the, the game, you know, you'd celebrate, you you high five in and you're, you're celebrating and you it's brilliant. But we went over to, to the crowd and um, my daughter to the game. Told her, him to bring her down. The, um, stewardesses wouldn't let her in so I had to part them and I carried her and I wanted her to see the fans being hyped and celebrating and stuff but at that point I looked at my daughter and um, I achieved my daughter and I knew that I had a responsibility to my daughter but I hadn't achieved this season and actually help the team don't get me wrong I scored goals but it uh, helped the team in any way I shouldn't say any way but I felt like I, I I wasn't present within that season and that's when it hurt me and I then passed my daughter back to my mate and then walked in the change rooms um, 
And then from then on, uh, we went up. Money went up again. It's nice to have more money, but I just wasn't happy. I wasn't present. I wasn't focused. I wasn't addicted to playing football. Um, I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't know where to go. Um, so, yeah, went on loan a couple of times. Went out to QPR on loan. Was that your choice? Did you feel you needed a chance to clear your head and a fresh start? Or was it a case of the club saying that things aren't working out here, well, you're not well, producing? Well, how did it work? Well first, of, well, first of all, I went to Wolves, which is just across the water. Not even across the water, it's just across the town. And they're big rivals. Um, and it was to get my fitness. I, th I think Birmingham still had confidence within me. It was just getting my fitness, getting my playing time up. Seeing if I could, you know, replicate the the Marcus Bent of two years ago. Was Mick McCarthy manager at Wolves as Mick well? Mick McCarthy was manager. Yes, he was. You've played under some big managers. Yes, I have. Time, yes, I have. Yeah. What was Mick McCarthy like? Mick McCarthy, <laughs> um, very strong-minded. Um, Bearing in mind the, uh, where you are at that point in your career, mm. where your mentality yeah. is, I suppose it's a different take on it. But how did you find I mean, going into Wolves, Wolves were the, the strong side who had just come up the season before. Uh, a good side. Um, oh, they were quick, they were young, they were sharp. I'm coming in with my hamstrings, my back out of place, but with a reputation of being a goal scorer, a premiership, a premiership player. It just didn't. It, it just didn't arise. It just didn't work. It just didn't happen. Um, Do you feel that's because your body was breaking down at that point? Do you feel that you'd been burned out? Do you feel that it was? Uh, I felt like I was being. I felt like I was burnt out. Yeah. I really did. Yeah. I really did. Um, and anyway, again, it sounds. It's again repetitive. It, it's, again, it didn't work out. Um, and this is at the back end of my career. So it, this is why I'm trying to say I got frustrated. Mm. I lost my focus. I lost my drive. Um, and then I then went to back to Birmingham and then um, get the gaffer pulled me over again um, and said, um, Middlesbrough, I want to take you on loan. Would you like to go? I think um, going out on loan and then trying to get me back into my playing career, I think it's part and parcel of them taking me off the wage bill and trying to see if I can then strive to be brought back into the first team. Um, it's like a double-edged sword. Mm, you know? And then as a player, as a person, how do you take that? You question yourself. Am uh, I strong? You know, again, at that point, my confidence wasn't, my confidence wasn't high. I can imagine your confidence is on the floor. I wouldn't say on the floor at that point. I'm still, um, I'm still living. I'm still playing. I still know what I'm doing. It's just, you know, I don't know if, if I sprint too hard or if I jump too hard, my hamstrings are going to go. So the confidence within my ability wow. gets, um, yeah, hooked back aside. Um, but anyway... Gordon went Strachan as well at Middlesbrough. Gordon Strachan. But he, he um, yeah, he was a hard manager. <laughs> It'll be like Tony Adams. Sorry, not Tony. I keep saying Tony Adams. Mickey Adams. Mickey Adams. Mickey Adams. Um, well, just old school in his mentality, the way he trained, the way he approached you guys, and what was expected. What what was so tough, tough and hard about him, in your opinion? Old school men mentality, um, which is good because that's where I'm from. Um, but again, wasn't going so well. Um, so when it's not going so well for a manager or a player, yeah. what, where do you go back to? You yeah. go, kind of go back to grassroots. You go kind of go back to the board. You go back to your basics and um yeah that was a hard transition as well because i'm a long long way i'm i'm the furthest i've ever been durham middles but oh lord uh, don't get me wrong beautiful people up there i enjoyed my time um great players as well i've still got good friends from um middlesbrough you like the people there but for some reason you, the body couldn't produce the form that you wanted yeah again um game time Confidence wasn't as apparent or wasn't as as sharp as I I I like it to be. I'm a professional. I like to score goals. I like to be sharp in training. I like to be sharp on a pitch. I like to be sharp mentally as well. Um, but it was just frustration. I think anger got the best of me. 
or should I say frustration got the best of me and anger came um, third party. It's at this point that Mickey Adams picks up the phone for the fourth time. Yeah. And it's insistent that you come and team up with him again at Sheffield United. Right. How, how grateful are you for one, for him, for giving you the opportunity yet again? Um, it's like when your your mind and body seem to be in the worst place, the Mickey Adams lifeline come, comes Well, uh, Well, okay. Mickey, yes. I'll put Mickey into a nutshell in a minute. But going back to Sheffield, going back to where... I'm not going to say where it first started because there was Brentford, there was Palace. You spoke about the love that you had for Sheffield. Yeah, but, in yeah and, you know, within, you know, the, the club and the town. Uh, so, I mean, when they sold me, they, they um, bought the academy off the back end of my cell. Wow. Right, the, tra the new training ground. So I walk up into the academy and this was bought off of me. Sorry, this was bought off of me. Um, Gives I, you a different kind of status that the club doesn't Yeah, have, and they know you know, you're Don't get me wrong, I didn't walk in there as if to say, you know, hi, I'm Marcus Bent, you bought this off me, like, <laughs> bow down to this me. This is it the was, Marcus Bent Yeah, academy. do you know what I mean? It wasn't about that, but <laughs> yeah, it, I get it, that. I get that. it gives you a presence and it gives you confidence. And walking into a club that... Uh, that respect you and, and, and love you. Uh, and again, like I said, I think um, before, not just from the um, players or the management, it was the, the it was the area and the backroom staff, it was the cooks, it was the, yeah. you know, everyone I speak to. Again, went down and done Sheffield United, Liverpool two weeks ago. And- um, Do you think that was them saying, bringing you back was saying thank you? I think that was a little bit. No, well, it. well, let's get to Mickey. Let's get to Mickey. I think I think Mickey was trying to um, uh, help himself and help me in a sense and okay. bring me back. You know, knowing the player that I was or have been and can be. So he, in his mind, he's thinking he can get get maybe so we eighty percent. We can back both, you know, course. both work off each other. Um, um, yeah. So I, I, th I think I, I think that's what it was. Um, I don't think Mickey knew. Um, the kind of love that I had down there. Um, again, <laughs> it's hard to say. I'm someone that, again, beats myself up, criticizes myself to go back to a club that I love and appreciate and have given me the, 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 the means and the, 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 the choices to go on and, and become the player I am. I just didn't have it. I just, I, I couldn't get there. I, the, the, the frustration within me was just crazy. Because um, so you can't get your body to do what you want. I just to couldn't do. get it. It's not because I was old or or. How part. old was you at this point? At that point, I was thirty-two. Yeah. Thirty-two, thirty-three, let's say. Um, just can't because. It, don't get me wrong. Training sessions, the boys were training with me. You know, I'm I'm on ball. I'm, I, I start the game and. I'm doing the things I'm technically gifted, not sorry, not totally gifted, but technically good enough to play within that game. But just when I needed to make that burst or or, or make that reaction or, or score that sharp, that sharp goal that I would do five, six years before, sometimes just wouldn't click into action because of... The hamstring injuries. Hamstring and you. mental health, my my... Depression, should I say? Confidence, should I was, say? We haven't touched on the mental health and the depression side of it. Yep. Was this at the time where it became more poignant in your life? Uh, when things, like you said, when things, the pressure are, of everything's on top of you, when you're thinking of things, you're not getting the, the, the breaks that, that potentially you've had in the past. Was this when the, the depression, if you like, really came to the forefront? Okay, okay. Before, before you know you're depressed, um, or, or you've got mental health, you suppress stuff. So you're suppressing all these feelings and all these injuries and everyday life. And it's only when it gets to a point where you realize you're not actually, I'm not gonna say as good as you were, but not as fit as you were, and you need to make a decision. So then those feelings come to your forefront and you have to make a decision off of what's been going on, your movements, your loans, your career. And at that point, um, I was, I was done. I was, I wanted to, 
um, move on and um, find other riches or another career um, to give me that confidence to get out of this suppressed stage. Problem being is that I had another manager, Neil Warnock, who then took me on loan to QPR. So then it was moving back to London. I sigh. I don't mean I'm signing it. I sign in that way. It was just, okay, another chance. Another manager that has, has seen me, loves seen me, the best of seen the best of me. Best. Is it scary in a sense? Am I going to be that player that he once saw? I still feel at that point I'm, I'm, I'm good enough. Again, just didn't work out. Didn't work out. And is that to do with the anxiety and the depression you've been going through at that stage, or do you just feel it was a combination of your your body, your fatigue? I just think age? it was my body and my fatigue, the fatigue at that point. And don't get me wrong, I think yes, it will be depression. I think it will be because when you look at back at that period, it, depression and people weren't as open as they are now. No, of course not. No. Yesterday we had World Mental Health Day. Yes, mm -hmm. you know yourself back in the times that you were yes. suffering from these things, mm -hmm. it wasn't as well documented, the yeah, help of course, wasn't yeah. as readily available. Yep. I remember know. going to Wolves for the first, sorry, at Wolves when I went on loan from Birmingham, we used to have a psychologist, a uh, counsellor, sorry. Um, and um, once a week he would come in and see individuals. And at that time, <laughs> you're suppressing stuff. You just want to go home, everything's fine. I'll come in training the next day. Don't worry about the papers, don't worry about the fans, don't worry about everything else, I'm good. So you wouldn't open up, you wouldn't talk to him as um, I would now. Yeah. Um, but I promise you now, um, going through what I've been through or um, live the life I have, I think every young player, I will say young player, needs uh, a counsellor. Regardless what you go through, whether you're sane, on top of the world, playing for England, whoever you are, up, down, you need someone to talk to. And it's communication. It's um, voicing your negatives. It's voicing your um, experiences. It's voicing how you feel. And if you can't do that, then you suppress your stuff. And that's when you get into a point where you then become mentally unhealthy. At this point, Birmingham City decide that they're not going to renew your contract. Mm -hmm. You're then in the football wilderness. Was there offers? Was there a lot of offers from England before you made the decision to move to Indonesia? What sort of offers came in for you? Um, well, I, I knew, I knew um, before my contract was up that I wasn't going to get another contract. Uh, I knew at that point I didn't want to play football anymore. Uh, a good friend of mine, Simon Bass, he's at ASC Wimbledon. Uh, he's a uh, coach down there, and um, we grew up together. Um, he called me, he said, um, AFC want you to come down and train. Do you fancy it? They just want to have a look at you, see how you are. I'm sighing because that's how it was. It was like, oh, here we go again. Um, what if I'm not good enough? What if I do get injured? Um, they had just come up three leagues consecutively. Now I'm going to bring my baggage, <laughs> my um, anxiety, my um, unconfident ass into this team. So anyway, went to train. Wasn't as fit as I should be, but again, I know how to work it. Experienced. Um, Medical, yeah, we want to sign you. Definitely know the medical procedure. <sighs> yeah, it's a long procedure. But um, yeah, so anyway, um, want to sign you. I went home and I, I just said no, I, I, I didn't want to do it. I, I just, I felt like, and it sounds, how do I say it? This is how I'm going to say it. I didn't want to overtake or suppress or take over from the youngsters that have come up from, I think it was second division, first division championship. And then people, press fans, then put it on me. Wow. Because I didn't have the, I'll be honest, I probably didn't have the confidence or the, 
Was this for a reason that you wanted to see the oven kids develop, or was this for a selfish uh, reason that you, know you what? couldn't deal with the pressure yeah, that yeah. would have come with being in the limelight and the yeah. expectancy level of that club? I think being at Birmingham, um, I got to spend a lot of time in the um, uh, reserves and um, training with the reserves. I didn't play much reserve team football, but I, I, I'd spend the Saturday afternoon whilst the team were travelling to a premiership game or Sunday morning on a warm down training with these young kids coming through and um, they kind of looked up to me. So I kind of took it on board um, to help them and push them forward. We would finish training. Uh, I'd always be the professional, uh, regardless whether I had stuff going through my mind. Do you or think you learned them things off Paul, the likes of Paul Dickov, the likes of Duncan Ferguson, helping out the younger generation, giving a bit of time back, showing them your runs, etc. Maybe so. Maybe so, but I, I, I couldn't tell you that right now specifically. Um, uh, literally, it was just, I felt for these boys, not felt for these boys, I had respect for these boys. And it was... see from where they're coming from. Yeah, I had to show my maturity. I had to show my responsibility. And I, f I felt when I was a kid, if, and again, I did have that, people showing me the right way how to do it. I couldn't be that player that was angry or wanted to just get off the training ground and want to go home. Was it quite therapeutic for yourself to help? It really was, yeah. Other players, younger players. Yeah, definitely, there. definitely. Uh, amazing, don't get me wrong, after helping them and getting back into my big ass car, whilst they're still struggling. Um, but don't get me wrong, before we'd done that, we'd eat food together, we'd get in the gym together. Yeah. Um, and I, I had more of a, a connection with the, the younger boys um, at Birmingham, towards the back end of the, um, my, my um, contract. Um, that a lot of them call me now and still speak to me, which is um, um, really inspiring. Um, hence why, yeah, being at AFC Wimbledon, I, th I felt like this is not my thing, this is not my transition, this is not what I need to do. You, your agent, your team made the decision to move to Indonesia. Mm -hmm to go and play for Mitra Kuka. Mitra Kuka. I hope I pronounced that Mitra right. Kuka. Mitra Kuka. Mitra Kuka. And don't Watching get me wrong, I can't, I can't speak any of the language. Indonesia but Super League. You must have learned, oh, you must have learned a few words. Out. Oh, yeah, bits and bobs. I, I couldn't tell you any words now. It's a long time tell ago me, again. Tell me about, without being disrespectful, tell me about the standard from mm. going from Birmingham, if you like, to, sure. to the Indonesian Super League. I um, want to know about the grounds. I want to know some stuff. Yeah, I mean, some of the grounds are huge. Some of them are huge. Some of them we used to land in a, a jungle, um, literally on a strip, and uh, be in a hotel which you couldn't even imagine. Um, That's and some it, experience. Ah, oh my goodness! Again, an experience for a certain amount of time, but then that experience gets to a point where you just want to go home. <laughs> you just want to go home. But at the time, ah, uh, what was the training like? Uh, we had a, um, a manager called Simon. Uh, he was English. He's actually out there, uh, not at Michikuka, but he's out there. He, uh, he's still in Indonesia. He's in Asia, yeah. Do you find you get managers and players that will become a big name in certain leagues abroad and well, stay I within that league? Well, he, he, couldn't get a, uh, he couldn't get a club in England, so he, he took his chances out in Asia and, um, um, and done really well out there, actually. Um, so, in Asia, you can get free European players, or foreign players, should I say. Okay. Um, and the rest have to be Asian. So, you would have counted to obviously one So, I'm one. We had an, uh, a Chinese player, and then we had a, um, a Russian player. The rest of them are um, um, Indonesian. Are they all, all, sort of, the rest of the team can speak English, you can communicate? So, basically, okay. Mitch Kuka were like a Man City. So, the team that bought me were like a Man City. The so they've got a huge fan base, I'm taking. Huge fan base. Huge fan. I wouldn't say huge in a sense, you know. In comparison to some in comparison, European but teams, yeah, but for yeah, their region. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we used to train at five o'clock in the morning, then we'd, we'd go home and then train at seven o'clock in the evening, which was a different regime to England. It was um, intense. It was, um, it was hot. Um, and then we'd travel two weeks away, two weeks at home. At that point, I brought my daughter over and my ex-partner because I didn't want to be away from my daughter at that point. Um, so we used to get a tutor for her. 
Um, Did you find that helpful with your mindset and your your anxiety, having your family around you, having that yeah, infrastructure? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, no, it was awesome. If I didn't have my daughter or, or my ex-partner uh, with me, um, don't get me wrong, I had Simon and there was an English coach as well who he brought over. Um, I think the, the players looked at it upon that I was uh, very friendly with the management and the, the staff in a sense and um, got treated in a different way. I, I got given a big house and a, a driver and a, you know um, the wages. They used to get put in a, a house with bunk beds. So they'd all be staying in one gaff with bunk one, beds? Yeah, literally. Wow. Um, and don't get me wrong. They is there any resentment from them? This is this is the, well, I, I don't know, control. and I'm not I'm not going to put that on them. I'm not going to say that. But not speaking a language, um, um, not really um, eating their food types, and having to have different stuff, and having a driver, having a bigger house, having a pool, not having a bunk bed, not having a bunk bed. Um, How would you have taken to it though? If they did went look. Like, We've signed you. They brought you over and went, look, here's your bunk bed here. You're I, I wouldn't have signed. <laughs> I, could, I wouldn't have signed. I mean, yeah, I slept in a bunk bed when I was 12, so that's not happening at all. Yeah. But, could um, you understand if there was resentment from the other No, guys? of course, of course, of course. And that's what I mean. The mature, mature is in, as, as I got older and understanding players. And every player that played in Mitra Kuka was um, an Indonesian international. They all helped me, they all backed me to a certain extent. So it got to the point where I didn't speak the language. Uh, you know, I didn't score 10 goals a game. So what's this guy doing here? He's living You're in one a, of their three stars. Right, he's, he's living in be, a... Right, exactly. They're expecting exactly. you to be scoring a lot of goals. Yeah, exactly. But again, the um, I, I'm not going to disrespect them in a sense to say that they weren't on the level that English players or European players were because there were some talented players there. Problem being, as, as I said at the weekend, um, if you're going to score a goal, if, or if your front three is going to score a goal, then the team needs to be behind you. They need to produce for you. Again, like you, you box. If your team's not behind you and they're not teaching you the right things, then you're not going to execute the right things within that um, that match. Um, so yeah, it, it, again, it was another grind. It was um, another soul destroying opportunity. But yeah, I decided to retire after that. You retired after that from the professional game, uh, even though friend Rodney Lampton got your to put the boots on for Wick a couple of times as well, which uh, must Rod's. have been interesting. No, well, I, I didn't actually put them boots on. Uh, Rod, well, how was you involved in? The no, well, basically, Rod, good friend of mine, childhood friend of mine, brought up in Shepherd's Bush, older than me, um, bit of a boy, um, but he's my good boy. <laughs> Rod is. Um, so um, he's into property and stuff, and um, the ground was down there, and he wanted to go and put some um, houses on there, and. Um, a, 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 a training club on their facilities for the club and then try and move them forward. So he just literally asked me to come down, help to train and maybe start one or two games. But I had to sign to coach and to get involved in it. But no, I didn't um, put my boots on for, for no. them, no. The protection of players now is so high. Mm -hmm. the, <clears throat> the way the players are sort of looked after within clubs. Mm. The clubs obviously will vary and different, but the protection and levels that are around them are different. You're from an era where people could potentially come in and out the training ground. There mm. was all kinds of people floating about. Mm. How and what advice would you give to, to young players to stay away from the bad trappings that come alongside or could potentially be there for football? It's not about staying away from the bad trappings. It's about living your life and just going about your business the way that you go about your business, how you've been brought up. Again, I've been brought up in Shepherd's Bush. Um, a lot of my friends um, didn't make it to the point where they had um, a house that I had, a car that I had. Um, but they're still my friends. They're still um, everything to me. I'd call it blood, my family. But... If you're going to put yourself in a predicament where you're going to go out clubbing too much or 
drive down the wrong high street and not do the things that you're doing, then I think you need to question yourself. You've been given an um, opportunity, you've been given a gift, you've been given a lot of money, you've got a club beside you, you've got your country beside you, if you're playing for your country. So wise up, um, be mature, um, work hard. But again, being given a lot of money at a young age, I can't blame certain players, I can't blame youngsters at times because you need that circle of people around you, you need that environment to help you succeed and move forward. Do you feel a lot of players are potentially vulnerable from from rogue agents, from people that could be looking to get investment for things from them and ideas? Do you think do you think that there's a there's a whole sort of how do I word it? I'm wording this wrong. Okay, I, 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 I'll put you right on that. Uh, uh, you're not wording it wrong. I'm not wording you're not it right. wording it wrong or right. It's just. I want to word, regard- word it right so the viewers okay, understand okay. what right, I'm trying on, to get at. Because I'm on. not. I'm not giving you enough to. Go on. No, I was, I was going to hit you. Uh, literally, I was just about to hit you. Sir, but if yeah. you want to word it right, oh, well, let me word it right, and then we'll go mm. in. Yeah, go. Along with earning a lot of money at the top of the game, there's obviously going to pe- see people that want to take advantage of that, that want to take advantage of players, and, and there, there will be pitfalls along the way. What advice would you give to players, who potentially young players that are earning such a lot of money, mm. what advice would you give them on money management? Um, answer to your question. Regardless whether it's now, before, or then, you're still going to get bad management. You're still going to get bad advice. People are going to still try trying to take you for what you've got because you're rich, because you're young. You're not wise enough to put the money in the right places. Problem being today is that the kids that have not even made it, sorry, I shouldn't say not even made it, but not got to a, a professional level that are still playing reserve team football, youth team football, are in a lot of money. Their mum and dad gets given a house. The father gets given a car. The mum gets given a car. The kid can get carried away. Again, being a young boy, being put into a predicament where your dream's getting put in front of you, you get carried away. My advice to those parents, because I'm a parent myself, um, and to those young kids, and professionals that um, don't know what to do, communicate, talk, um, and keep your family around you, um, and don't get caught up. It's um, a big world out there, and it's about looking after yourself and your health, mental health. Um, Tomorrow is not gifted. But I wouldn't take it back. Why I wouldn't take it back is because now I have two sides to the story. So now I can talk to people and see their side and effectively help them along their way. So again, whether it be me counselling someone, me helping someone, or just being there for them just to communicate to. There's a there's a place for everyone. I've just got to find it, but I need to be passionate about it. I'd love to see you get the passion back for football. Whatever it is you want to do with your time in life, I know that. But football in particular, I know how much it means to you. And I can, talking to you today and going through your journey from mm. everything, mm. I know how much football means to you. And you're just a man that wanted to be loved. You wanted that that successful period and respect from a, from a club, teammates and friends. I, I mm. kind of get that. Mm. I kind of see that. As you just saw, I just took a big breath there. Breathed. Took a bit of big breath. Um, it, I think wanting to be loved, I think is probably 90% of the human race, right? Um, wanting to be respected for what you do and what you're passionate about. And I got that respect, I got that love. Then having to not lose the love because I still got it. You know, I'd walk the street and still have people um, talk to me. But again, going into the tunnel, 
walking out into the stadium, it's that hub, it's that circle, it's that environment that you're used to, the environment that... And the respect that comes along with that, yeah. the prestige, yeah. the persona. I wasn't so much a person that would walk the street or um, be in a restaurant that would like to interact with people. Um, I'd always be pleasant and um, sign autographs and stuff, but it was between me, my friends and my family. But once you put me into a work environment, then that's where I am. Um, yeah, I, cr I craved it. I loved it. Yeah. It's been a great pleasure talking with you today about your career and journey. And I know there's there's many facets that we can go into that we haven't really covered today. For sure. But I thought I'd leave a little bit of bit of toast for someone else to have a go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate it. And as I said, it's been a huge honour to go over it with you. And I hope. I hope to God we've we've done your career a little bit of justice. Thanks, James. Thank you, Marcus.